Hello everybody, it's a writer's share and welcome to episode two of our building a PC in Minecraft series. In the last episode, what we did is we went ahead and built this little addition circuit right over here. It does both addition and subtraction and we built up a ton of RAM. So what I've done in between episodes is I've actually doubled the amount of RAM we have. So you can see we have this massive section right over here. So these are our read buses for our RAM on both sides. I doubled it up so that way instead of going in a loop that way, we essentially shorten the amount of time it takes for the redstone signal to travel all the way down here from all this. And this complex circuit that you see right here, this is called a multiplexer. So what it does is it basically converts a binary sim signal into just a single output signal. So basically only when, let's say we wanted to select this one, only when this one is powered and when none of the rest of them are powered, will it read this section of RAM. And beyond that, there is, isn't much new to this. And in this episode, what we're gonna do is we're actually going to go ahead and focus on actual storage. So this is our memory. This is where we'll be loading programs and executing programs too. And then we're gonna have a huge section over here where we get to store our programs. And what I'm essentially gonna do is I'm going to set up a lectern where you're able to load and save programs onto the disk. So that way you can have multiple programs saved to the computer and you don't have to reprogram it every time. So let's go ahead and hop over into my testing world so I can show you what I've been working on. All right, so we are over here in my testing world. You can see it's pretty much blank. This is really all I have inside of it. So what we have here, is this super duper cool circuit. So these are little memory cells, and this is what we're going to be using for our hard drive. And basically how this works is this is a total of 16 bits or two bytes of hard drive space. Uh, I only have four of the bytes set up. So this section here, all these black wires are a two-way read-write bus. So that's why we have to have these two way redstone repeater extenders or redstone uh, just extenders. So let's say that we wanted to have our information set as one uh, and four and eight. So let's go ahead and select those. And then all we have to do is real quick, flick this on and then off, and then we will turn these off. So what this has done is it's gone ahead and stored one, four, eight in our memory cells. So if we go ahead and select read for our memory cells, you'll see one, four, and eight turn on, which is perfect. If we want to clear, all we have to do is turn off the read function, turn right on and off, and then there we go. That memory cell has been cleared completely, and it's super duper useful. Uh, the reason I didn't use this for the RAM is because the buses are super duper big and require both way, uh, require this bulky circuit right here that extends the signal. But this is going to be perfect for our hard drive. And of course, we are going to be hooking up a multiplexer, which will allow the read and write signal to go in. This bus right here is going to have to visit every single uh, memory cell in our solid state drive. So our solid state drive is going to be quite bulky as this is the size of a single module and it's gonna take me a while to build. In fact, I'm probably only going to build up one of our memory modules right now, uh, and I will duplicate it later, but for now, we're going to keep it simple with just the one. All right, now, before we actually get into the building our solid state drive, I just want to explain to you all how this works. So basically what happens is these are our read-write buses. So these both input and output data. So what will happen is whenever we want to write something to this bus, what we'll have is a multiplexer that will go ahead and select a row, which we'll have eight of in a column, which we'll have eight of. And that will allow us to correctly select which one of these that we want to have active. Um, and say we do want this uh, module right here active, basically what would happen is we have both of these redstone lines active, which would disable this AND gate right here. Uh, and let's say right here is the 
we just wanted this one bit to be on. So we're gonna go ahead and send that information down the data bus. We're gonna go ahead and say, okay, now write this information and this information will only write to um, the single bit or a single module right here that's actively selected by our multiplexer. So let's go ahead and turn this off. And now whenever we want to read something, again, we select the correct module of the multiplexer. And then all we have to do is turn on that wire. And you can see this is the only one that's on. So let's go ahead and basically all we need to do to reset the drives is we just need to power that on and off and this is now reset. So if we go ahead and select read again, you'll see we get no output and I have checked. This will indeed save uh, when you save and quit the game. So it is a reliable way to store stuff on your computer. So basically I'm gonna go ahead and jump into a time-lapse now. Um, I will be hopefully using the replay mod if I can get that to work and I will be using uh, structure blocks in order to actually get this to work. Structure blocks are some of the best blocks in the game. If you don't know how to use them, they are definitely worth looking into as they are probably yeah one of the most useful blocks that you can get in game. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump in to that time lapse now. Now, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get a time lapse in. I couldn't get the replay mod to work, which is a tad bit unfortunate, but it's all good. So this right here is one kilobit of SSD storage. So what we have is we have these black wires as our buses, of course. They're all hooked up. They all are bi-directional and work perfectly. This is where our buses end up. This light blue wire down here is our multiplexer. So this lets us select what cell that we are going to write to. And of course, then all we have to do is send power to the buses. And this, these two over here are our read cells and our write cells. So I'm just gonna go ahead and show you how it works. You can see right now, since we don't have any data in here, our first cell is just selected right there naturally. And basically what we need to do is let's go ahead and say, let's write uh, a pattern like this to that cell. So let's go ahead and write that pattern to that cell. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and flick our right on and off real quick. And then we're going to go ahead and unpower our bus just like that. And then if we power our read wire, we should see, yep, something is a little bit broken. So that is a small thing I need to fix. Uh, I will just double check real quick that it has enough strength. Oh, it doesn't, it just doesn't have enough strength to reach on there because the wires are supposed to go in this direction. But uh, if it was coming from that direction, that cell would have been had a one written to. That's why the bus is all the way down there. I accidentally had the bus is going the wrong way and there's just so much here that I do not have the time or the energy to necessarily reverse that. But let's go ahead and just clear the data and that's simple as just flicking the read wire on and off or the right wire on and off. And then if we go ahead and select read again, you will see none of these wires turn on, which is perfect. That shows that our SSD is in fact working and this is just perfect. Uh, so I am just going to real quick teach you all how to build a single one bit cell in this SSD so you guys can kind of understand how it works. So these things are actually rather small. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with those two blocks. Go ahead, place redstone dust on them. Next to that, we are going to go ahead and place in two blocks like that. Go out by two blocks. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and place a comparator right there with a repeater running into that. Then you're gonna have redstone dust running into that comparator, go out and down by a block, place redstone dust there. Now you're gonna come into the center piece and you're gonna build out two blocks there. Where you've gone down a block, go ahead and have a repeater running into that block with a repeater running into that repeater. And that is actually basically the entire memory cell done. To be able to turn this on and off in read and write, all you need is a lever in these three positions. 
So in order to write to the cell, I believe we need to turn that one on. So uh, to write to the cell, you go ahead and go ahead, just flick this lever and that will write any information that is currently on this bus to the cell. So if we go ahead and write a one to the cell, that has now officially been written. And if we go ahead and read the cell, you can see we'll get a one output. If we go ahead and write a zero to the cell so that there's no information on the bus, and then we read it again, you will see we will get a zero as our output. So that's how these little small memory modules work. Now, these memory modules were not designed by me. I will have a link in the description of this video to the place in which I found the instructions on how to build these memory modules. They're super small, super compact, and super duper easy to build. So hopefully if you decide to that you need any memory cells for some reason in your Minecraft worlds or in a Minecraft build, this is the perfect way to do it in my opinion. It is such a great little circuit. Now, unfortunately, that's all I have time for for today's episode. We got a lot done. Like this is a huge piece of our computer done. Uh, we built an entire one kilobit SSD solid state drive for our PC. Fortunately, this thing is also vertically tileable, which is going to be super nice. And it will, it will definitely speed up when we do indeed build other layers because I do want to be able to store multiple programs within this area. In the next part of our, in the next video in the series, we will actually start working on some of the logic. We are going to build up the part of a CPU that allows us to pull stuff from our SSD way over there and put it into our RAM. So that is what we will be working on next episode. Our CPU will probably be over here. And that also means we're gonna have to start building ourselves an interface for this machine. So that is going to be quite interesting. Our interface is probably gonna sit right here in the middle of everything. We'll probably have a screen over in that direction, potentially if I could get that to work. But I hope you all enjoyed today's episode. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. I hope you all have an absolutely wonderful day and I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye.